end will be marked by a settlement. That is the final point. When everything is over, there will be, uh, that's not simply just over and becoming empty, but there will be some kind of settlement. Okay? A man was brought to him, and the parable says, and settlement is a personal, individual issue, not a group of people or not a family, but a man was brought in. So this is an individual calculation for settlement. There's a debt to pay. Uh, according to the parable, that was 10,000 talents. Of course, the, the figure is not that important, but uh, to analyze, 10,000 talents equals 10,000 times 6,000 denarii, and which is about, uh, in US dollar terms, about $3 billion. In Korean one, that is a Samjo one. That, that is a something we cannot even imagine, right? Uh, in your lifetime, if you count um, uh, a dollar uh, uh, every second, still you cannot count this much money, right? Um, and the master says, sell him, his wife, children, and property. Of course, these are priceless personally, but still, that is not enough at all. Because according to the historical accounts, uh, 10,000 talents equals uh, the, the price of 30,000 slaves at the time. So, you know, it's a small family, and whatever he had, uh, he's a debtor, so probably not uh, great properties in, uh, under his possession. So, of course, there's absolutely no way of paying back. Absolutely, right? An entire annual taxation of Palestine, that area at the time, was annually 800 talents, according to the historians, which means that his debt was equals more than 10 year taxation of the whole uh, area, the Palestine. So uh, again, uh, the figure is meaningless here. Simply, this is uh, something you cannot pay back. And what is the servant's reaction? Of course, uh, there, since uh, there is no way of paying it back, he, fails, uh, he falls on his knees uh, as a sign of a submission, and he says, Master, be patient. And this is a, a, a seeking grace. I will pay you back. Uh, of course, he's not capable of doing so, but at least he's showing the intention, right? That I will do something. But what is uh, the master's reaction? Master took pity on him. And this is a beautiful word, isn't it? The most powerful characteristic trait of God is mercy. Right? Without mercy, where can we go, right? And he canceled the debt. Canceled the debt. <laughs> How great. Just his words took care of everything. And then the servant went out. And this is uh, uh, interesting that when the debt is canceled, uh, in a sense, uh, that's not the end of uh, our life. Uh, because this is, uh, if this is symbolizing our salvation, salvation is not the end of our life. If it were, God could have just called us into the kingdom of heaven and uh, we are enjoying the beautiful life there. But he saves us and then sends us out. So there's a still life to live after that cancellation. This is the picture, symbolic picture of Christian life. So after salvation, we have life to live, right? Now here's the uh, very uh, interesting uh, uh, kind of turn uh, of the story, the second round. The servant finds somebody uh, on his way out. He found one of his fellow servants. And we all have debt to someone. So, uh, yeah, we are debtors, and at the same time, there may be some people who owe something to us, right? And how much was that? It was 100 denarii, which is about 5,000 US dollars. 
uh, which is uh, about oil mammon in Korean. Well, that's a lot of money uh, for my empty pocket. Uh, <laughs> but as compared to uh, like Ujo one, uh, you know, uh, this is nothing, right? Uh, the Messenger Bible, uh, which is a very easily translated uh, version, uh, shows like a. Uh, Hundred thousand US dollars versus ten dollars uh, compared, but in the true scale of uh, what the Bible says, like um, uh, the, uh, the talents and the denarii, uh, that is about uh, the scale of six hundred thousand dollars versus one dollar. Uh, that the debt, original debt was uh, six hundred thousand times bigger than uh, what he had the right to. And what he did, he grabbed and choked. Oh, this is a very violent action, aggressive and merciless action. And his fellow also fell to his knees and he begged him and said, be patient and I will pay you back. Well, this is very familiar, right? Because this, what he did is exactly what this uh, servant one did to his master. But his re reaction, was refusal, and he threw him into prison. Here, this is very interesting. Uh, the issue is, it's not a legal issue, because it is true that he was a debt, and he had the right to uh, the payment. So, legally, rightful. So, uh, the, if we look at the two scenarios, uh, they are basically very similar, even though the amount is very, very different. But the, uh, the final uh, response, uh, responses are very different. The opposite reaction. Other servants, and there were other servants, see it and be become greatly distressed. And this is the most common emotion felt by non-Christians toward merciless Christians. They often say, oh, he does that, and is he Christian? Uh, they always talk about Christianity and God's love, but he's doing that, and we, they always talk about merciless uh, Christians like this. And then King's solution comes in. The king calls him in because he is the king. And then he says, you wicked servant. What a, good, what a wonderful summary, summary of um, what's happening. This individual address, you, wicked, and servant, right? So this is an individual issue, and what the problem is, the wickedness, and status, you are, you are a servant. In merciless, no sense of gratitude. Perhaps even his promise to pay back at first was not sincere, but was only to avoid the moment, maybe. Okay? And the master says, I cancel the debt because you begged me. So here, uh, the issue is not equity or justice, but it is about our attitude or our emotion. So, shouldn't you test just as I did? It, this is a plea to moral, moral obligation and common sense, not elegant or complex legal issues. And uh, the master is saying, just as, right? But we neglect God's mercy in everyday life. So here, um, uh, this is, I mean, this is very interesting that this is a a moral issue, uh, not the legal issue, right? The master turned him over to jailers for torture until he pays back. And the master has the sovereignty. And that cancellation is cancelable. Well, actually, this is deeply disturbing for me um, <laughs> because, well, my debt is all cancelled, but all of a sudden the cancellation is cancelable. Uh, in, of course, this is uh, uh, the parable, so uh, in a sense that is a cancelable. The, the pain of his fellow servant must be felt by him. 
perhaps this was the only way to make him sensible. And this is the final segment, therefore, it is a very, very serious issue. And Jesus summarizes the parable, saying, this is how Heavenly Father will treat each of you. When God deals with us, with justice, there is no place for us to go. So, when the Lord is showing the justice, the, the legal issue, then absolutely we have no place to hide. But unless you forgive your brother from your heart, not a monetary issue, but our emotional or attitudinal issue. And I think this is an extremely important issue for Christians these days. As everybody knows, uh, previously we uh, uh, humans thought about uh, our human uh, uh, like uh, traits, uh, uh, personalities in many different areas. And uh, they emphasize the emotion, they emphasize the reasoning and so on. But uh, from the, the Western countries uh, uh, during the, the so-called rationalism uh, period, uh, like Immanuel Kant uh, or Rene Descartes, or John Locke and you know, people like that, as everybody knows um, in the history of philosophy, uh, they emphasized on logic and um, how things uh, should be logically connected, right? And from then on, people uh, discounted uh, the emotion. And uh, uh, even in English, they already say that uh, the reasoning is high and being emotional is very low. But in fact, in Christian life, that may not be true. We are not commanded to calculate, but we are commanded to feel. So this is an emotional uh, and attitudinal issue, not a, a kind of a calculation issue. Right? Now, uh, uh, for the remaining some time, uh, I, I, I'm not supposed to finish early because uh, our potluck <laughs> is waiting and uh, if I uh, finish too early then we have to uh, be having a kind of a silent time uh, sitting together waiting for uh, the meal uh, coming from uh, some Chinese restaurant, right? Okay. So, alright. For the remaining some time, uh, we'll, let's uh, talk about three points to ponder. Okay? The first one is forgiveness. Uh, the word in Greek is afieni uh, or afeso, uh, that means sent off, uh, like away and sent. English has a forgive, and it means give completely, uh, like a before and give. Uh, Latin word uh, perdonare uh, is give thoroughly, like a uh, peri is a thorough and donare is like a donation or something, like a giving uh, as a gift. So basically the Western idea is let it go and not with you, okay? That is forgiving. The Korean concept is very interesting. We, uh, the forgiveness in Korean is yongso, right? And yongso, yong is like a containing and so is understanding. So this is a rather interesting uh, concept that uh, Korean forgiveness is not sending it away, but it's embracing it and sympathizing with it and understanding it. Therefore, anything that stands out there, anything irregular, anything uncomfortable disappears within you, right? This is uh, our concept. Our forgiveness is, in a sense, not complete, but theoretically cancelable. This is a theoretically cancelable and conditional. Our debt is not completely cancelled. Of course, if uh, God uh, cancels my debt, right, uh, or my sins, then that does not mean my sin is no longer there. To be exactly, it's there. It's there, because what I did is what I did, but it is regarded regarded as cancer. That's why the Old Testament often talk about 
uh, often talks about God's uh, forgiving or forgiveness like uh, painting over. The original sin is there, but new paint is added, so it's not visible anymore. So in Korean word we say domal. Domal simply means uh, painting over. Right? So we have a kind of primer painted, and then on top of it we have this color, and then the primer is usually pinkish, but that's gone, right? Because it does not visible. But it's there. It's uh, simply regarded. God regards us to be sinless, right? Why? Our saving faith is in our heart. And the feeling of a divine forgiveness is also in our heart. And the heart is a commanding center controlling our actions. So the truly forgiven people will show themselves in actual life. In what they do, people will see whether this person is a truly forgiven or not. Then the reverse is also true. If you are, we are not uh, forgiving others, okay? that is what we do. Then the, the, uh, the feeling of true divine uh, forgiveness, forgiveness may not be in our heart. Then our saving faith is not there in our heart. Then we are not saved. So this is logically the reverse, right? So if we do not forgive others, that may mean that we are not truly forgiven. This is a deeply disturbing, right? Our fundamental issue is not of being rightful, but of being merciful. Of course, you may have the right to be paid back, but this is about our attitude. Mercy is not a decorative option but an absolute obligation, therefore. Okay? So, look at this. I